Hi guys. In this video, we are going to discuss functions or function notation as it is sometimes referred to. A function in maths is simply a rule for handling numbers or letters. You've seen simplified versions of this before in primary school. They were, recall, they were called number machines. And for a wee example to hopefully spark your memory, where if we take a number, in this case I've called it X, we know that a letter is just a number we don't know yet, and we times it by three, then at the end of the number machine, we get three X. So if we were gonna do that with a number, let's pick six, and if we do it times three, then what we get is 18. We get three times six, so we get 18. And that was a number machine. So now that we're moving on, we're at secondary school, we have to have a different way of writing the number machine, to writing the function. And what we tend to do is we tend to use letters to represent functions, usually F, G, or H. If I was to take the number machine above and I was to write it as a function, what we would say is a function of x is 3x. And if I replace x with a number, then I know that I'm going to multiply that number by 3. So what do we use functions for? We use functions to pair one number with another. And then from there, we can use these pairs to plot coordinates and create an image of what the function represents. So let's have a look at an example of that in action. So we've got consider the function f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. And then we're given a set of values. So we've got values of x between negative 1 and 3. And then we want to plot its image. So all we're going to do here is we are going to substitute in that those sets of numbers. And we're going to see what number we get out. So we've got f of x equals 2x plus 1. So I'm going to start with f of negative 1 equals, I've replaced the x in the bracket with negative 1. So what I'm going to do on the right hand side of this function is I'm going to replace the x with negative 1 again. And then I'm going to solve it. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, add 1 is negative 1. So I can then I've got a set of coordinates. I've got negative one, negative one. For f of zero, I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I've replaced the x with a zero in the brackets. So anywhere else there's an x, I'm going to replace it with zero. And then I'm going to solve. Two times zero is zero, add one is one. So my coordinate is 0, 1. And then I'm going to repeat this process for the, all the values that I've been given. So I've got 1 this time, so it's going to be 2, bracket 1, which is going to give me 3. So my coordinate is 1, 3. For f of 2, 2, bracket 2, plus 1, so that's 5. So I've got 2, 5. And then my last one, f of 3, it's going to be 2, bracket 3, add 1, which gives me 7. So my last coordinate is 3, 
seven. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot these points on this set of axes that I've got. So I've got negative one, negative one, and zero, one, x axis, and then y axis, one, three, two, five, and three, seven. And you should realize then it is a straight line, not a very well drawn straight line. But it's a straight line. When I connect the dots up, it is a straight line. So we can use that, or we can use function notation to plot these coordinates. What you might have noticed is f of x equals 2x plus 1 is very similar to y equals mx plus c. So it makes sense that when we actually plot the image, that it comes out as a straight line. So let's look at a slightly different example. We've got consider the function f of x equals x squared plus 3. And the set of x values between minus 2 and 2. And again, we're looking to plot the image. Now, you've probably noticed already this function has got an x squared term. So we won't be expecting it to be a straight line. It's not in the form y equals mx plus c. So it's not going to be a straight line. I'm not going to change. The process though, I'm going to go through the same process again. So I'll start at negative two. We've got f of negative two is going to be negative two squared. So I'm replacing, but I've replaced the x, I've replaced the x again on the other side, plus three. Be careful with this. Remember, if you are squaring a negative number, then your answer will be positive. So negative two squared is four, add three is seven. So my first coordinate is going to be negative two, seven. F of negative one is going to be negative one squared plus three. So negative one squared is one, add three will give me four. So my second coordinate is negative one, four. F of zero is going to be zero squared plus three. So that's going to give me three. F of one, one squared plus three. Four. And then finally, f of two gives me two squared and three, which gives me seven. So I've got my five coordinates. I'm going to go to my set of axes and I'm going to plot the coordinates. So I've got negative two, seven negative one, four, zero, three, one, four, and two, seven. And then I'm going to connect them up in order. And we get the shape of a parabola, which we will come back to in future lessons. So. Remember that word, parabola. We can also use functions to find the values of different letters. And this tends to be where functions appear in 
exam papers and past papers. It can be somewhat of an abstract concept sometimes, but once the penny drops with it, it becomes fairly straightforward. So, we've got a function that is denoted by f of x equals 6x subtract 2. And the first part is asking me to evaluate f of 3. So if I'm going to evaluate it, I'm simply going to work out what number it gives me. So if f of 3 equals, I've replaced the x with a 3 in the bracket. So I'm going to replace the x with a 3 on the other side. So 6 times 3 is 18. Take away 2 gives me 16. So f of 3 is 16. Part 2 says write down an expression for f of t. I'm not going to change anything about what I do here because we've said in the past a letter is just a number we don't know yet. With the previous part, we had to find out f of 3, so we replaced the x with a 3. For this part, I have to find f of t. So all I'm going to do here is replace the x with a t. So my expression for f of t is 6t subtract 2. Part 3 is the tricky part. It says if f of t is equal to 28, find the value of t. Well, we already know that f of t is equal to 6t subtract 2. And now we've been told that f of t is equal to 28. Which means that then, if 6t subtract 2 is equal to f of t, and 28 is also equal to f of t, then logically what we can say is 6t subtract 2 equals 28. If they're both equal to f of t, then they must be equal to each other. Now that we've got it in the form of an equation, we can use our knowledge of equations to solve for t. So remember your three rules. I want letters left, numbers right, opposite side, opposite operation, and my equal sign stays in the same place. So the first thing that's going to do is the negative 2 is going to come over and I'm going to have 6t is going to become 28. If the negative 2 is moving over, opposite side, opposite operation, it becomes plus 2. So 6t is equal to 30. I want to have t on its own. So if the 6 comes over, it's multiplying on the left-hand side, which means on the right-hand side, it is the opposite operation. So we're going to divide by 6. So if f of t is equal to 28, the value of t is going to be 5. Okay, that's all for me for just now. As always, if you have got any questions, please don't hesitate to get in contact. This is Mr. Gillen signing off. Speak to you all soon.